Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. Today we are creating an acrylic like material in Redshift and Cinema 4D. But before we do that, there is a big Bold and Break announcement. Bold and Break has released its first shader pack for Redshift. Have a look at what you can now purchase from the Bold and Break store. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So have a look, go to the Bolden Break store and check it out. There's also a freebie section on the Bolden Break store. You can grab yourself some freebie working files from the previous tutorials we've done in the past of this channel. Loads of stuff will be added over time. Bear with me, the shop is a work in progress. Let's get started on creating this material. Let's create a sphere. Let's now create a dome, go into our HDR. Let's just use, let's use this for our dome. Just a basic HDR from the Maxon library. Turn on our renderer, create a standard material. Maybe rotate our dome a little bit. So the first thing we do, press C and type in distorter. And now we have this distortion node, uh, a relatively new feature of Redshift into our color. Now. The distorter node does what it says, it distorts. You need to drive the distortion via a map. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to actually use a Maxon noise. There's gonna be a lot of Maxon noise in this. We're gonna plug this in to the distorter pipe. What that does is this is now the map that drives the distortion for the texture we're going to later input into this distortion node. Scroll down on our texture panel here and we're going to put our overall scale to 200. Actually, let's bring it up to 400. Let's then press C, type in Maxon Noise again. Plug this Maxon Noise into texture. We also need to apply our texture to our sphere so we can see what is going on. We want to change the noise type to Booyah and we can see here our noise is applied to the sphere. Let's bring up the scale to 200. Nothing is distorting. Why? First thing we want to do is change the amount to about 100. You'll see some movement there in the texture. Let's change the Y value to seven. And there you go. We are already building the base for our paint texture let's just drive up some roughness here maybe to 0.4 in our reflection so the next thing we want to do is press c type in max on noise again and we're going to use another max on noise to blend into the color of our texture max on noise into the distorter node so let's go to general color one choose wavy turbulence for this i'm going to scroll down here and we're going to match the scale of our Maxon noise that is ahead of this one. Let's just name these so it's easier. Texture, color, blend. Zero, one. In our color here, we want to go for a kind of a reddish, yellow, brown. Do something a little bit more towards red here. Okay. And then let's pick yellow. We want to add another Maxon noise and pipe this into general color two. Call this color blend zero two. We want to pick a purple here. Come kind of close to the example I showed you. Maybe a really dark color there. Go for darker purple. Change our noise type to poxo. Scroll down to your input. Bring that scale up to 200. And that will help, again, scale up to the same scale as these other two nodes. And you'll get a nice blend of color in here. These Maxon noise nodes give a nice blend in between the colors of this distorter that we're applying here. Okay, cool. So this is looking good so far. Let's press Shift L so we get kind of a 
an organized visual look to our nodes and the next bit is our displacement so let's bring in our displacement here pipe it in and we want to right click on our sphere in the object panel go down to render tags apply your redshift render tag you should all know this by now if you've watched my tutorials select geometry override enable your tessellation and enable your displacement let's put our max displacement up to 50 and now we want to add some very cool displacement to this how do we do this we want to follow these lines here we don't want to just add some random displacement so let's use what we have here we are going to select these nodes here our distorter and our driver of the distorter press Control c Control v we are going to put our distorter into the texture map of our displacement we are then going to take our texture of our displacement node copy and paste again and drive this into the texture of our distorter and this is looking pretty awful why is that so we want to go back to our redshift tag over here and we want to disable enable auto bump map so with that let's just bring down maybe the intensity of our dome lights so we can see what's going on better so when you are using a distorter node with your displacement node it is best to have enable auto bump mapping ticked off it doesn't work with that feature bring our displacement scale up to five and we're not following those lines of distortion through our bump map why is that that is because we need to set the minimum edge length to 0.5 what that is doing and our displacement is a bit too much so we're going to actually bring that back down to two and that is looking much much better what's happening here is added a bunch of subdivision and tessellation to our object via the redshift tag here so redshift is doing all the subdivision it's applying a certain wireframe of topology to this let's actually show you what's happening here i have done a previous video on this but it's always good to show if we just put this i have got the wireframe node i've just pressed c typed in wireframe and we can see it is applying the redshift subdivision onto our surface here so let's see what's happening if i bring up the min edge length to two you can see the length between the edges of our topology is now a little bit longer let's go up 10 and see what i mean so there is a perfect example so these edges they are longer and longer the the higher this value if i bring it down to 0.5 you'll see here that it's really tightening the distance between each edge so that is allowing redshift to distort these at finite detail now we have the basis of our acrylic paint texture let's kind of finite art direct this a little bit and see how we can get this looking a bit better so we want to go in select our standard node here so we can add some maybe reflection and transmission because it's paint it's going to have a level of transmission let's put this up to maybe 0.3 maybe that's too much maybe 0.2 and let's find the ior for uh, acrylic paint it's probably we won't probably find it for acrylic paint but we will find it for acrylic glass okay so 1.492 is what you get with acrylic glass let's paste that uh, index of refraction in here uh, let's maybe bring down the reflection to 0.8 and there you have it there is the basis of this texture and there's probably more you can do just to kind of add further finite detail you want to play with the transmission maybe add an extra bump map on top there is a few bits you could do but you've got a pretty cool looking material that has that kind of like canvasy paint dried look you want to make it look wetter so you add more reflection this texture will actually be released in the next texture pack so i've kind of 
sold myself short a bit there so you already know how to make one texture in the upcoming texture pack after the current one so please go check out the bold and break store like subscribe all those good things remember to grab yourself a free working file if there's anything there that you are interested in thank you for watching and goodbye